Let us now build the entity relationship diagram or the logical model step by step. This is based on the description that we had looked at earlier. So I'm just going to show you each of the points in the problem description and then uh, develop the ERD pretty quickly. Okay, so first it says Amazing has several registered customers and for each customer we maintain the first name, last name, birth date, etc. Okay, so of course that will turn out to be uh, an entity type called customer. And for this customer entity type, we've got a primary key called customer ID. And then we have chosen to keep the customer's first name and last name, and then street, city, state, and zip code. So those are all the attributes of customer. I have chosen to make first name, last name as required attributes, and street, city, state, and zip as optional attributes. Now in your project, you can make suitable choices, whatever is sensible. Uh, now, a couple of things to note. One is, of course, customer ID. I have made it into a primary key. Notice that I have called it customer underscore ID. It's a good practice for you to follow. Whatever is your name of the entity, you have uh, uh, entity type name underscore ID would be the primary key. You can just follow that consistently. But the important point to note here is for your project, I want you to make all the primary keys into integers. Okay, so if you look here, the type is integer. Okay, that's what I want you to do for all of your entity types. The primary key is always going to be an integer. Okay, so that's something we'll just follow automatically. Okay, so of course we've made it into primary key by checking this point. Good. Uh, and then first name, I have made it into a va variable character length or a var care. Okay, that's what you're seeing here. Var care means what? It's, it stores characters and it can store a variable number of characters. Okay, so it can store a uh, variable number of characters up to a certain maximum. And that maximum is what you must specify as part of the size. Okay, don't leave the size blank because then you'll run into problems later on. Okay, well, at the stage when you create the database. As of now, if you leave it blank, Oracle Data Modeler is not going to complain, but you'll run into problems later. So whenever you have where care, be sure to specify a size for it. Now, what size you specify just has to be some sensible value, right? So if it's a first name, I'm saying first name is not going to be anything more than 50 characters, so I made it 50, okay? Uh, so that's important. Uh, similarly, with last name as well, uh, straight, uh, street, state, city, zip, everything. They're all things that I have made into where cares and provided appropriate lengths, okay? Some of them, first name and last name, I've made as required attributes. Others, I've kept them as optional attributes. Okay, so now we are looking at uh, products. For every product, we store a, pro a product name and a price. And of course, that turns out to be an entity type looking like this. Product ID, product name and price. Okay, and I've made, uh, you know, just made sensible decisions about what is optional, what is required. Uh, and then again, product ID has a primary key that would be an integer, just like what we did earlier. Uh, I want to discuss price a little bit. Okay, when it comes to price, you would have noticed that Oracle Data Modeler has a data type called currency. Okay, uh, I've faced some problems by in using that earlier. So I'm just recommending that for any uh, price related items, just use numeric as the data type. Okay, call it numeric. But when you have a numeric data type, you must specify the size for it. Okay, there are two things you need to specify. One is the scale uh, precision, which is totally how many numbers, how many digits will be in your field. Okay, that is the precision. And then you've got scale, which is how many digits after the decimal point. Okay, I have made it uh, the total size as seven and the number of uh, elements after the decimal point as two. Okay, of course, if it's a price, it's always going to be two after the decimal point. And the other size, you can choose what you want, the overall size, which is the precision. Okay, but this is required. Don't create, uh, uh, you know, any numeric column without specifying both precision and scale. Okay, so the next thing we are doing is we're going to create sales orders. So obviously, uh, our description says, one order can contain several products uh, with different quantities for each product. 
and one product could be on several orders and so on and therefore I am creating this logical model for this uh, based on what we have looked at earlier right so you got a customer customer can place zero or many orders but each sales order has to be for one customer only and uh, for sales order we've created sales order ID as the primary key just following what we had spoken earlier it would be an integer right and then there is a sales order date which can be a date there is a date data type and we can just pick that okay so between sales orders and products there is a many to many relationship as described here okay and the associative entity between them is basically order item okay so I have created order item or whatever I call it order line call it order item okay and order item uh, as its own ID order item ID this is another thing that I am recommending for the project not recommending I am requiring which is that for every associative entity type create its own primary key no key migration okay so throughout your project you shouldn't be using any key migration I'm saying this just to make life easier for you when you get into Apex and start building the application. Life will be a lot easier if you just give every pr uh, primary key, every entity type its own primary key, an ID, and do not rely on key migration at all. So which corresponds to the diagram that I'm showing here. You've got uh, a sales order and then here is our associative entity type order item it has its own primary key order item ID and the only other attribute it has is quantity uh, which is a direct attribute and of course because of its one to many relationships uh, sales order ID and product ID are obviously foreign keys within order item that is implied whenever you have a one to many relationship that happens and it happens here as well okay now uh, the line from sales order could have been solid to say that well you cannot create a sales order uh, without at least one line in the order you can do that uh, but I have just chosen to make it uh, dashed make it optional okay uh, the next thing our diagram says is uh, our description says is every product belong to many product belongs to many product categories and each category could have several products okay so that's the relationship between products and product categories okay so then our uh, diagram comes out like this so you've got product this part is just the same as before so you got product and you've got product category here which is sort of hidden by my video and then you've got since it's a many to many relationship between product and product category you've got its associative entity coming in here which I am calling product category uh, membership okay it's just a name I thought up for the associative entity you could have just called it product dash category right in fact when you have trouble naming an associative entity just create the name by combining the names of the two participating entities so this is product this is category so you just say product underscore category that can be the name for the associative entity okay and this product category membership has its only its primary key like I said earlier for every entity type we're going to create its own primary key so following that rule I have created a primary key for this all by itself again notice that there's no key migration being used here okay and then we are also saying product categories are hierarchical in the sense that one category can contain zero or other categories and one category could belong to zero or uh, one other category okay that's a unary relationship uh, that we have okay uh, so that's what we've got here so product categories uh, we are making it a unary uh, here the category this has a unary relationship uh, which you're not seeing here in the diagram because it's being obscured by my video uh, but it's there okay so that's our logical model now in your project 
uh, there is no requirement that you must have a unary relationship you don't have to in fact most likely you'll you can get by quietly without having any unary relationship at all okay which is fine there's no problem so that's our complete logical model okay now it's very important what we are doing in this project is we've got a project description we are building our logical model and then we are going to take that logical mo model forward further right so it's very important that you make sure that your logical model doesn't contain any errors okay because if your logical model has errors then these errors will creep into later phases of your project and then you may run into a problem down the road uh, you know down the line and then when you find the problem you have to come back all the way to the original thing and then fix the problem and then go forward it becomes very messy okay so i really want you to be careful while doing your logical model so that you don't run into any difficulty so here is a checklist to make sure that your logical model is complete and acceptable okay so first requirement is every entity type must have its own primary key there is no key migration at all okay so after you build the logical model make sure you go check for this if there is a problem fix it right now you're going to run into problems later on okay and when you name your entity types make sure that the names don't have any spaces or hyphens in them okay within your logical model oracle data modeler doesn't object but later on when you go and try to create the database you're going to run into difficulty okay so i'm saying don't have any spaces or hyphens in any entity type names or any attribute names okay go and check for this very very carefully because if you have this problem it's going to come back and bite you and you're going to waste several hours later on it's easier to fix it right now than to go and fix it later and then make sure that your model doesn't have a line that is completely solid meaning both sides of the relationship should not be solid that situation should never arise okay if you have that you'll run into problems later on so go back think about a little bit and make one of at least one of them dash or possibly the whole thing dashed okay no fully solid lines in your model but of course when you have an associative entity type all the lines going out of the associative entity type will be solid okay but the other side of the associative entity should almost never be solid okay again make sure that your final model does not have any many to many relationships because if it has a many to many relationship then you're going to create an associative entity to represent the many to many relationship and therefore after you've created the associative entity you will not see any many to many relationships only one to many relationships will remain there okay so your model should not have any many to many relationship another very very important thing if you make a mistake here you're really in trouble your every attribute on your entity relationship diagram must be assigned a type you know integer numeric var char date something you should not have any attribute without assigning to it a type very important okay another important point is every numeric and var char attribute must have a size okay for a var char attribute the size says what is the maximum number of characters that will be in a value for that right for it's a name you say 50 that means that field can have a maximum of 50 characters now you can choose whether it's 50 or 20 or 30 or 200 that's your choice okay for a numeric field for a numeric attribute your uh, you need to specify both the precision and the scale as i have just explained in a previous slide okay precision is the overall length scale is how many digits 
after the decimal point okay and another important thing of course something that we've been following all along is foreign key attributes are implicit Oracle data modeler automatically creates the foreign key attributes we don't have to go and create these foreign key attributes artificially by ourselves those are automatic so you shouldn't really have to mess with those at all okay so first would be for you to come up with a description build a logical model and then make sure that you look through this checklist and make sure that everything in your logical model obeys this checklist if there's a problem fix it right now